peace and blessings to everyone. The Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that sitteth on the right hand of the Heavenly Father, the heaven of heavens, bless us all. That's right. It's under His power and authority in His name that He commanded that repentance, man confessing and forsaking the sins and turning to God, should be preached in His name among all nations beginning in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth. That's the commandment that the Lord gave his apostles. And the groundwork that the apostles of the Lord laid out, we have the scriptures today. So, all praises to the Most High Christ. So, let's go to, let's start there in Luke 24. Sorry, Luke 24, 47. And we'll start there. Most High Christ, bless you, Israel. Happy Sabbath. All praises for the scriptures. Peace and blessings to your homes, wherever you are. Luke, what you said? Luke, uh, Luke 24, 47. Luke 24, verse 20, 47. And that repentance and remissions of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. All right, so what we're reading here is a commandment. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that now sit at the right at the right hand of God. We're reading the commandment that He gave unto His disciples after His resurrection from the dead. He appeared to His disciples for forty days, and He had given them commandments, and He spake to them of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And at the end of the 40 days, he ascended to the Father to sit on the right hand of God, which was symbolic that all power and authority was given unto him to rule in heaven and in earth. And through his disciples, see, he would break, he would work great works. He would rock great works through his disciples. So before he ascended to the Father, he told his disciples that repentance is to be taught in his name meaning under his power and authority among all nations because the 12 tribes of Israel are scattered among all nations and it said beginning where at Jerusalem so repentance in the name of Jesus Christ was first to begin to be preached in the city of Jerusalem and when did that come to pass when we read in Acts chapter 2, we ain't got to get it, but when we read in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, that's where we read where the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the spirit of truth, the spirit of the Most High in Christ, came from heaven upon the disciples. And they began to preach Christ out of the law of Moses, the books of the prophets and the Psalms of David, proving that the Lord in Christ of Israel that's written up in the scriptures is. Jesus of Nazareth. That's right. That's right. That's what they preached. Beginning at Jerusalem. So one more time, brother. Luke 24, 47. <laughs> Luke 24, verse 47. And that repentance and remissions of sins should be preached in his name among all nations. Among all nations. You know, beginning at Jerusalem. Beginning at Jerusalem. So another point that he brought out was not only repentance, that how we're to turn from sin and serve God, but he also brought out the aspect of remission of sins. Because we receive the remission of our sins because we sinned against God through the man that gave them this commandment to preach. We receive remission of sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. Remember, John the Baptist, as he was baptizing the children of Israel in water, let's get there, John 1, 29, declared Jesus as what? The Lamb of God. So let's get there. This is the book of John, chapter 1, verse 29. The next day, John sees Jesus coming up. The next day, John sees Jesus coming on to him. So now, as John the Baptist is preaching repentance unto the children of Israel, Baptizing the children of Israel in water as they confessing their sins to prepare them for the Messiah. The Messiah approaches John the Baptist. We done. And said. And 
and said, this is what John the Baptist said concerning Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Read on. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. So John the Baptist was declaring to the people of Israel, there he is. Behold. This is the one I've been preaching to you about. Behold the Lamb of God. Meaning, behold the Lamb provided of God. Behold a Lamb provided of God. So when the children of Israel heard this, they identified Passover Lamb with Jesus Christ. Because the Passover Lamb, when we read in Exodus 12, was a sacrifice. We were saved through the blood of that lamb. We were delivered, our firstborn, because the Most High is going to plague the firstborn of Egypt, of man and beast, that didn't have the blood of the lamb upon the side of their doorpost and on top. If that lamb of that Passover that was sacrificed, any home that didn't have the blood of the lamb would be destroyed by that angel that brought the firstborn death in that household. So tell us in Exodus 12, I want to get a point on that because it's fitting that we're reading this scripture because today is the seventh day Sabbath and today when the sun sets is the Passover. It's the Passover feast of unleavened bread. And we understand that maybe our brothers and sisters don't understand that tonight is the Passover, but we do know that all things in due time, all things in God's time. Right. You know, we're not gonna learn the truth in one day. We learn the scripture, as my brother Lou would always say, one day at a time, one scripture at a time. See? So it's all it's all in God. Look, one man planted, another man watered, God gives the increase. Right. We're not gonna raise up and wake up the tribes of Israel. The Lord Jesus Christ sitting on the right hand of God. He's the one that's waking up the tribes of Israel. Our part in the matter is to be obedient unto the commandments that he gave us. Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I'm going to be with you in the form of the Spirit of Jesus. Now, Exodus, right? I'm going to uh, read a point. Uh, because John said, behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin. Did we read that? I don't know. Yes. Okay, read it again anyway. I'm sorry. John 1, 29. John 1, 20, John 1, verses 29. The next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him. That's John the Baptist. Go ahead. And said, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. This is the Passover Lamb. The Lamb going back to the first Passover we kept in the land of Egypt was a sacrifice. It tells us that in the scripture. And this sacrifice delivered us just like Christ would deliver us. But this deliverance that Jesus Christ would come with was a different type of deliverance where, yeah, we were delivered from the firstborn dying, being spared of that plague of the firstborn dying. We were being delivered out of captivity bondage in Egypt that we were in under 400 years. This foreshadowed a greater sacrifice, Jesus Christ, that God would provide for us that would take away our sin. Set us free from the bondage of sin. Take away our sins, and not only that, set us free from the bondage of sin. Because when we're in the bondage of sin, we're taking captive by Satan and his will, where we're being manipulated and controlled the power of the devil. Even though, in our mind, we think it all. Oh, I make my own choices in life. No, we're being manipulated by the devil. We say, I make my own choices. I don't need to follow God. I don't, follow, I don't need to follow commandments. I don't need to follow the Bible. Then who we follow? The devil. When we follow ourselves, we're following the devil. Because when we think that we're making our own moves and our own decisions, we're being influenced by the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and that pride of life. Where we, no one can tell me nothing. See? I don't need that book. I don't need God. I don't need to read that scripture. I'm my own God. See? So, 
Christ came to deliver us from sin. Now, let's bring a point now. Let's go to uh, Exodus 12, right, brother? And let's read from verse... I want to just get right to the point about the Passover lamb. Go to Exodus 12 and verse 26. Behold the Lamb of God. So when the Israelites heard this, they knew about the Passover lamb, right? Now they hear about a lamb of God. So this this lamb, this this lamb is a, a lamb provided of God. So we had to equate some type of what? Deliverance. See, when John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, we should have been equating what John the Baptist said with our deliverer. Our deliverer. Our deliverer. But our deliverer from what? Roman captivity and bondage? Nah. Not yet. Not yet. The deliverance from the bondage of sin. That's the bondage that Israel needed to be delivered from. See, uh, the chief priests, elders, and scribes in Israel, they thought, we keep the law. We keep the law. We keep the statutes. We keep the commandments. I wear my friends blue water. I keep the Passover. I keep the, the Day of Atonement. I get tithes of everything that I that the Lord blesses me with. So Israel, we a lot of our people we thought that we didn't need a deliverer. What's the son of David, the Messiah, the Christ of Israel come? He gonna deliver us from the hands of whatever nation that we under. At that time, when John was speaking to Romans, and when he come, he gonna deliver us from our enemies. Destroy our enemies or we gonna rule. And Christ came with God's program, not man's. And he said, unless a man be born again, he shall not see the kingdom of God. So that blew a lot of people away when he said those words to Nicodemus, because them words ain't just for Nicodemus, they for what? All is all that we must all be born again. So this is above and beyond knowing that we Israelites. I wear my friends blue board, I keep the law, statutes, commandments. Even on our best day, our righteousness is as filthy rats. Okay, so we have to understand that this Passover lamb that John the Baptist was preaching was going to be a deliverer. It was a Passover lamb that was killed in Egypt when we were in the land of Egypt during the time of Moses and bondage under the Egyptians. That past, keeping that Passover that night, that delivered us. From bondage. But the Lamb of God is a greater Passover. In the sense that what? This Passover Lamb will deliver us and give us remission of sins. Through what? By Him sacrificing an animal or a goat or a lamb on our behalf? No, Himself. That's right. So Lord we're we going to get some of these points. So, uh, Exodus chapter 12, verse 27. What's it say? I'm sorry, 6. Exodus 12, verse 26. And it shall come to pass, when your children shall say unto you, What mean you by this service? So, Moses was teaching the children of Israel, the household, the heads of the household. And it shall come to pass, when your children shall say unto you, What mean you by this service? So, what service was Moses speaking about? When you go back to the beginning of the chapter, it's talking about keeping the Passover. How we had to take a lamb of the first year, had to be without blemish. We took it on the 10th day, fed it, washed over it, and on the 14th day, we killed it. And then the blood of that lamb, we had to put it upon the doorpost of our home, the side and on the top of our home. And when that angel of death came over the land of Egypt, when that angel saw the blood as a token that we kept the feast, that angel of death passed over our homes. That anywhere in Egypt where that blood of, the, of that lamb was not upon the doorpost of their homes, the angel of death killed the firstborn of man and beast in that man's house. And I tell you later that there was a great cry that went all throughout the land of Egypt. There was in one house where the most high didn't play, where the, the firstborn wasn't killed. So, 
where we would keep this feast in future generations as the heads of the household, the father, you know, is, is, is prepared for the Passover to be kept. The children would say, Daddy, you know, why are we doing this? You know, what's this lamb all about? Why, why, is we, why do we got to get a lamb on the 10th day without blemish? And why does it got to be killed? And why do we have to take leavened bread out of our homes and out of our coast? Let's see what verse 27 says. Exodus 12, verse 27. That ye shall say. That ye shall say. It is a, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. He did again. It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. That's what John the Baptist was speaking about. Behold, the Lamb of God was taken away the sin of the world. When we read this, this is deeper than the Lamb that was actually sacrificed in Egypt and other Passovers after that. This foreshadows Christ. When we read this in Exodus 12:27, that's Christ. That's Christ. It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. The Passover lamb that was killed in Egypt and other and the other subsequent Passover lambs killed to keep the Passover, they were considered a what? A sacrifice. Now do not the scriptures tell us that Christ was a sacrifice for our sins? Yes, it does. So it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. Now, why does it mention Passover? And sacrifice involves what? Animal sacrifice. So when you go back to verse 5, what was sacrifice? A lamb. Let's read that, verse 5. Exodus 12, Exodus 12, verse 5. Your lamb shall be without blemish. Your lamb shall be without what? Blemish. Meaning the lamb that was to be sacrificed in Egypt. It had to be without any de defects or any blemishes. Be read that again. Your lamb shall be without blemish. So who is this symbolic of? Jesus Christ that knew no sin became sin for us. Christ was as of a lamb. The apostle Peter taught it without blemish. He teaches us how we were redeemed. Now we're corruptible things such as silver and gold and the old covenant. We're redeemed from our sins through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And it tells you, Peter teaches us that he was without what? Blemish. He was without sin. So when John the Baptist was speaking the words, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Let's go back to Exodus 12. Because what we're reading here in Exodus 12, Prefigured, it foreshadowed Jesus Christ of Nazareth becoming a sacrifice for our sins. And it's fitting that we bring in these scriptures out during the preparation of the Passover. This is the time of the day that our Lord was killed during the preparation of the Passover. Tonight is the Passover feast of unleavened bread. A lot of our people are not preparing for this feast, but that's why the Lord got these scriptures being taught. A lot of our people, they they get ready to prepare to what? Celebrate what? Easter. That's the holiday, so-called, that our people follow. And Easter has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Christ did not die on Good Friday, so-called, and rise Easter Sunday morning. That's a day and a half. Jesus Christ taught that he would be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights and then be risen from the dead. So how do you get three days, three nights from Friday right before the sun goes down to Sunday morning? Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, that's one day. And then from Saturday evening, the seventh day, to the first day morning, that's a day and a half. So Easter has nothing to do with the resurrection of Christ. Christ was not risen on the first day of the week. How do we know that? Once we figure out the time of the day when he was buried, that's when you begin counting the days. So when we read in the scriptures, in the book of Luke and Mark, it tells us that even was coming. The sun was getting ready to set. Joseph Arimathea begged for the body of the Lord to be taken down from the cross to have him buried. So he was buried before the going down of the sun. So if it's Sunday morning early, 
And the sisters came to the burial place of Christ. And the angel said, Why seek you the living among the dead? He is not here, he is risen. He couldn't have rose on that day. Because if he did rise on the first day of the week, it would have had to been when? At even. When the Bible tells us the first day of the week, early in the morning while it was dark, that he had already risen. Not that day. On the seventh day. Christ was killed on the fourth day of the week, buried on the fourth day of the week, risen on the seventh. Now there's a lot of scriptures we can go and prove that, but we just kind of like summarize it. That Easter has nothing to do with Christ. Easter actually goes back to the worship of the goddess Ashtoreth, which is dealing with the goddess of fertility. That's why you got the bunnies, the Easter bunny. That's dealing in fornication. That's what that's symbolic of. You understand? Bunnies don't lay eggs. That's foolishness. So you got our people worship all oh, the day that the Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Now he rose on the Sabbath. So there's a lot we gotta learn. A lot we gotta learn. And a lot of things that we've been taught to think, to believe that is the truth, is the furthest from the truth. Especially the things that we've been taught that we believe is the scriptures. When it, it's, it's not the, it's the scriptures being taken out of context. It's the scriptures being taught and taken out of context to make something that to make it say something that it's not saying, to have us believe blindly that we're following Christ when in actuality we're not following the scriptures. We're following the devil. So a lot to learn, right? So Exodus 12, 27, and uh and then we went to verse 5. So let's read verse 5. Your lamb shall be without what? It says, Exodus 12, verse 5. Your lamb shall be without blemish. Your lamb shall be without Shall be without blemish. So the Passover lamb sacrificed in Egypt. It had to have no defects. It had to have no blemish. What is that? Symbolic of Jesus Christ being without sin. Being a sacrifice for us. Like John the Baptist said. You know? It says, your lamb shall be without the blemish. Right. A bell of the first year. She shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Continue. And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. So Moses was, Moses was instructing the children of Israel that this lamb that we got on the 10th day was to be killed on the 14th. What day of the month was Jesus Christ killed? On the 14th day of the first month. So at the same time that the Passover lamb was killed in Egypt and all the other Passovers leading to Christ becoming our Passover the day that, that he died, the lambs had to be killed on the 14th day. Christ was killed on the 14th day. They tell us that Christ was killed during the preparation of the Passover. So the Passover lamb had to be killed between the 13th day and 14th day. When was Christ killed? Just like it's written in Exodus 12, on the 14th day of the first month. He was on the cross on the 14th day of the first month. He died on the cross on the 14th day of the first month. The sun was getting ready to set. Joseph Arimathea begged for the body of the Lord had it taken down and him and Nicodemus prepared his body with the spices and oils and the aloe, wrapped his body in linen and got his body in the earth right before the sunset. So when the sun set, now it's the Passover feast of unleavened bread, which is the 14th day of the first month at evening. So Christ fulfilled in all aspects the Passover lamb in Exodus 12. Even how he was killed. The time that he was killed, the day he was killed. That's why Christ says, search the scriptures. For in them ye think, meaning you know you have eternal life. And there they was testify of me. And so now let's read on. Oh, uh, let me see. Okay, now let's go back. Now let's read that 27 verse again. <clears throat> Exodus 12, verse 27. That ye shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. Who pass it over the houses of the children of Israel. And now we're getting an understanding of passing over. Passover. Because it's us. Who 
will pass, the Lord's Passover will pass over the houses of the children of Egypt. Read on. Of the children of Israel. I'm sorry, the children of Israel. In Egypt. In Egypt. Thank you, brother. Go ahead. Where he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses. And what? And delivered our houses. And what? Delivered our houses. Is that Jesus Christ our Savior and our deliverer? So we're seeing where this Passover land that was kept in Egypt foreshadowed who? The one who John the Baptist that went before God in the spirit of Paul Elijah, right? What did John say? He called him Jesus the Lamb of God. So this foreshadowed Christ. So we read Christ all throughout the law and the prophets, even in depth here in Exodus 12. When he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses. Why? Because the blood of the Lamb. Just like the blood of the Lamb of God delivers us. Read on, brother. And it says, And the people bow their head and worship him. All praises. <laughs> All praises. So now, uh, go to 1 Peter chapter 1. You know that? Yes, sir. 1 Peter chapter 1. And uh, let's read verse 18, brother. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18. What as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things. See, we were not redeemed. We were not delivered with such corruptible things. Is what? A silver and gold. Right. So this redemption of the bondage that we were under, we were not redeemed with silver and gold. Back in ancient time, if, let's say, it could have been one of your servants. I mean, it could have been a, a fellow Israelite, and he was in bondage a servant to another man that man could be bought out of that slave this servitude of sin money couldn't deliver us money can't deliver us from sin money can't deliver us from lusting that leads to adultery or fornication money doesn't deliver us from anger that leads to murder so we were not redeemed with such corruptible things as silver and gold read on from your very conversation received by tradition from your father. Right, so what is Peter going into? The Levitical priesthood and the ordinances tied to it, animal sacrifice for atonement of sins, and never purge our conscience from dead works. You know why? Because we would just have animal sacrifice for our sins. And then we would what? We would continue in sin. We would never change. So those sacrifices of animals, lambs and goats, they never purge our conscience from dead works, right? I just want to hold, hold that point, right, brother? Hold that verse and go to Hebrews chapter 9. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 9. chapter 9 verse 14 how much more shall the blood of Christ so when it said how much more meaning under the old covenant the most high allowed animal sacrifice for atonement of sins and it fulfilled its part until the Lamb of God would come right so how much more meaning how much greater is Christ than the old covenant and the animal sacrifice too so read it from the top again how much more shall the blood of Christ? How much greater is the blood of Christ as in comparison to the animal sacrifices under the old covenant? Lambs and goats, read on. Who through the eternal spirit, who through the eternal spirit of God, read on, offered himself. Offered himself. When Christ came to be a high priest, he didn't come on this earth to now push the sons of Aaron to the side, the Levites to say, all right, I'm going to take over animal sacrifice. He 
paid off for what? The sacrifice of himself. Who is this? The Son of God. How much greater is the sacrifice of the Son of God than for the animal sacrifices under the old covenant, under the Levitical priesthood? Read on, brother. Over himself. Of himself. Read on. Without spot. Without what? Spot. Didn't Exodus 12 say that the lamb had to be without blot, without uh, blemish? <laughs> right, thank you, brother. Meaning without spot. Meaning without sin. Jesus Christ, that is. Read on. Over himself without spot to God. To God, see? So Christ became our high priest. I'm going for myself to be a sacrifice your people, Lord, for my people. And he was without what? Spot. Christ knew no sin. Be done. Pour your conscience from death works. So the blood of Christ, knowing that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came on this earth and spilled his blood for hours since he was nailed to a cross. The Son of God was nailed to a cross for six hours. And he suffered on that cross. He bared our sins. He bared our iniquities on that cross that he was nailed to. He died for our sins. Oh. Read on, brother. Purge your conscience from death works. So the blood of Christ, knowing that the Son of God came on this earth to die for my sins. Whoa. That will motivate, that will inspire a man to know that God provided a land for us to die for our sins. A man that fears God truly will be like, wow, I got a truly, I got to truly get right with God. These animal sacrifices, they're not getting to me. They're not getting to me. They're not purging my conscience from dead work. But to know that Jesus Christ died for my sins, man, shall I continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Man, I, I gotta put off lust. I gotta put off anger. I gotta put off pride. I gotta put off anger, jealousy, covetousness, worldliness, addictions. I gotta put these things off, man, because the Lord died for my sins, man. I gotta repent. I gotta get right. I gotta draw a night to God so that God and Christ draw near to me. As the comforter, the spirit of truth. So I could be a new creature and become born again, see? That's the difference between the sacrifice of Christ and the old covenant. The sacrifice of Christ purges our conscience from dead works to what? It says, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. To serve the living God, which must be worship in spirit and in truth. We can't worship God in spirit and truth when we're in the midst of sin. We're in the flesh. We're fulfilling the lust and desires of our carnal desires. God is a spirit. And they that worship must worship in the spirit of truth. He's a spiritual God. He's a living spirit that exists. He's spiritual. And we got to worship him in spirit and truth through Christ. That's how we worship God in spirit and truth through Christ. That's why I said, the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship. Jesus Christ taught that the Heavenly Father desires us to worship Him in the spiritual way and in truth, being according to the scriptures, according to Christ. Not according to how we feel we should serve God in the thoughts of our own mind, because that's how we got religion. We got to follow the most high according to these scriptures. And we got to be spiritual. Because God is spiritual. We can't be carnal. God is not carnal. So, uh, that was it on that verse there, brother. Uh, go to 2 Corinthians 5. From there, brother. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And, uh, yeah, uh, 21, yes. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he had made him. To be seen for us. Wait a minute. For he meant it, God had made him, Jesus Christ, to be what for us? To be seen for us. Now do we understand what John the Baptist meant by 
Behold the Lamb of God. That's what John the Baptist said concerning Jesus Christ. When the Lord came, John the Baptist baptized the children of Israel in water. People repenting, confessing their sins in preparation for the one that would baptize them with the Holy Spirit. And if we don't repent with fire, unquenchable fire, we don't want that baptism. We don't want the baptism of fire. We want the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of the Most High in Christ abiding with us, within us, that's like living water that we can continually draw from and drink. That leads to us abounding in the fruits of the Spirit, simultaneously purging the works of the flesh, the whole man. Dead works can only be purged by the Spirit of the Heavenly Father in Christ being within us. It's not by our own. It's not, well, I know I'm an Israelite. And I, I hear the law, statutes, commandments, I'm going to keep them. to repent. We got to be born from above. Not from within. Because I know I'm an Israelite and I'm a Jew to keep the laws of his commandments. What did, what did Peter say in Acts 15 about trying to keep the old covenant? Neither we nor our, our forefathers are able to keep the old covenant. We're saved through grace and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and through that faith and grace by us repenting turning from sin drawing nigh to God he drawing nigh to us cleansing our hands from sin purifying our hearts from double minded the most high is going to put his spirit his word within us and he going to write his commandments in our heart in our inward part That's right. but we can't do that unless like Christ said if you want the new wine you got to make new bottles we want the new wine, we want the Lord to pour that new wine, now pour the Holy Spirit, then we gotta make new wine skin bottles. I mean we gotta become a new creature. In order to receive the Holy Spirit, we have to repent from sin and be baptized in water in the name, meaning under the power and authority of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to receive remission of sins, to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Ain't no other way around. Any other way, that man is being a thief and a robber. So let's read on, brother. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. From the top, though, again, brother. For he had made him to be sin for us. So the Heavenly Father made Jesus Christ to be sin for us. Behold the Lamb of God. What was John the Baptist teaching, in essence? God has made this man, Jesus Christ, to be sent for us. That's what he meant by, behold the Lamb of God. Like Abraham told his son Isaac, Isaac said, where's the, where's the sacrifice going to be? God will provide the Lamb. That's what Abraham said, in the very same land that our Lord was killed. See? So, behold, there he is, the Lamb of God, because God had made him to be sent for us. That what? Who knew no sin? Who knew no sin? Because he was like Exodus 12 prophesied, a lamb without blemish, a lamb without sin, a sacrifice, a deliverer. Did we not read the word? We were delivered by that Passover lamb. That's what we read. Exodus 12 foreshadowed the death of Jesus Christ, a lamb provided of God, just like Abraham said, God will provide a man. And he did. Because the gospel was preached to Abraham. He knew about Christ. He knew about the resurrection from the dead through Christ. That's why he was willing to sacrifice his only forgotten, his loved son Isaac. I mean, he had Ishmael, but that, that was the chosen one, Isaac. Right? He was ready to slay him. Why? Why would he slay his son? Because he believed that if he slayed him because God commanded him to do so, 
that the most I'll raise him up from the dead anyway, so I'll kill him. Because I know God will raise him up. That's a man that knows about what? The same doctrine that the apostles taught, the resurrection from the dead. Because we got to present our bodies a living sacrifice in order to obtain that resurrection from the dead through Christ and his second coming. So now it's time to step up our, our walk in God and walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit of what God is trying to show us in these scriptures. And not make it about the flesh. Boasting in the works of the law. Boasting in your Israelite. When John the Baptist said, don't even think to say within yourself. He was already reading their mind because the spirit was working with John the Baptist. John to put them thoughts in his mind to say he already read their thoughts the most I gave him that uh, discernment when they came to his baptism he said don't even think to say within yourselves we have Abraham your father God is able to be stoned to raise up a people onto him when they came and John the Baptist teaching repentance right from sin and getting baptized they're like We're the teachers of the law. What do we got to repent from? What do we got to repent from? That pride. How, let's begin with that. The pride. That self righteousness. Ecclesiastes said the beginning of pride is one departed from its maker. So we think that we're righteous and we don't need to repent and we don't need to get baptized. Now baptized and water under the power authority of Christ, a greater baptism than John. To receive the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. See, when John baptized the Israelites in the water, none of them received the Holy Spirit. When Christ did, because Christ is the first of us, of all things, even the first to be risen from the dead to live eternal. So when did the Israelites receive the outpour of the Holy Spirit, the comfort of the Spirit of truth? After Christ ascended to sit on the right hand of God. But like Paul explained in Ephesians 4, the Father couldn't ascend into the heaven of heavens and sit on the right hand of God for us through Christ to give us the Holy Spirit until he first descended into the lower parts of the earth. What's that mean? When John, when uh, Joseph Amathea saw the Lord on the cross after he, after he died, he begged for the body of the Lord. Holy faith, the Son of God must be buried. He, he can't even remain on that cross. Going into the next day to pass over another bread. That the Son of Man must be lifted up. They're like, lift him up. Crucified and killed. What Messiah is he talking about? The, the, script, the law and the prophets say that the Messiah abided forever. His kingdom is eternal. Yes, his kingdom is eternal. But what they, were, they, they didn't understand was that the Messiah, before his kingdom reigns forever, he had to make an atonement for our sins. That's in the law and the prophets. The scriptures tell us that the Redeemer, it speaks about a Redeemer, a Deliverer. A deliverer from what? Sin. Israel thinks, no, bondage from the Romans, Babylonians, Persian Medes, the white man in America. Why are we in, why are we in captivity under the nations? Because of sin. <laughs> so if the Lord delivers from the physical bondage, of being under these nations today and put us back in our land and we have not been restored to a sinless state, what's going to happen? We're going to fall back in the sin. You think Christ going to come back on this earth and die again? No. He may, he died for us once at the end of the world. There's no more Christ coming back to die for man's sin. 
It's important for men to live once and then die. And then when he comes back, he's not coming back to die on the cross and save men from sin. He's coming back to deliver those that repent. So there's a lot we gotta learn on in the Pharisees Christ and they understand. So he said that the Son of Man must be lifted up, they stoned. They're like, what Messiah is he talking about? So a lot to learn. So let's read on. It says again, for he had made him to be seen for us. For us. Because we sinned against God. We broke the covenant that he made with our forefathers. So the most high, so I'm gonna make a new covenant. Not according to the old covenant, animal sacrifice for atonement of sins, but what? The land that would be for provided of God. We know, brother. Who knew no sin. So Jesus Christ knew no sin. He committed no sin. So when he said to the people, he that is without sin, let him first cast a stone at her. Who was the only one that truly could say was without sin? The one that spoke of Men, they were ready to stone that woman that was an adulteress. They're ready to stone that woman, man. And Jesus Christ said, He that is without sin, let him first cast a stone at her. And it tells you that they all dropped their stones from the greatest to the least of them. And they all left. And he told the woman, Woman, where are thine accusers? Has any man condemned thee? He said, no man had condemned me, Lord. He said, neither do I condemn me, right? Because Christ could be the only one that could truly condemn us from sin because he was without sin. Those Pharisees, Christ says, if they would have stoned that woman to death, they have sin within themselves. They're not, they, don't, they don't have the right to bring forth that judgment like that. Their sin is themselves. So he said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. So in Christ, we're not to continue in sin. Did Jesus Christ die for us? Yes. But are we to willfully sin? Well, Jesus died for me. Let me, I'm going to just fulfill my lust here and then just pray to God and Christ to be forgiven. Then we're doing like under the old covenant. We're going through the motions of something that's not truly changing us. The blood of Christ is to truly change us. It told us in Hebrews 9. It purges our conscience from what? Dead words. To serve the true and living God. That's the frame of mind we got to have. We can't abuse grace, Israel. We cannot say Jesus died for my sins and continue in sin. What's the whole point of being baptized? It's symbolic of the death and burial of the old man and the rising of the new. See, this is information. It's not being taught in the Catholic Church, the Baptist Church, the Pentecostal Church. Seven day they're not they're not bringing forth the understanding of what Christ dying for us truly means. Even the serpent in the wilderness that was lifted up. When we saw the serpent upon the brass pole and we looked upon it and repented from our heart from our sins, when we looked upon the serpent upon that brass pole, that was to keep us in remembrance of God's commandments. So how much more should the blood of Christ keep us? in the remembrance of God's commandments. Because that's what Christ came to die for, sin. What is his name? Jesus. What did the angel tell Joseph? Thou shalt call his name Jesus. And he shall what? Save his people from their what? Sins. What is sin? Murder, adultery, fornication, idolatry, breaking the Sabbath, covetousness, bearing false witness, slander, dishonoring father and mother, serving other gods, Going against the dietary laws. We did these things as a people. We broke these commandments. Christ came to die for us. Because those animal sacrifices wasn't purging our conscience from sin, dead works, to serve the living God. But we know that the Son of God died for my sins. God provided a lamb for me, for my people. And this lamb was not a lamb, lamb. It was a land without blemish, Jesus Christ. Wow, man. That can fix my heart. That puts my heart. And then, brother, what shall we do? What do I do? What's the answer? Like Peter said, repent and be baptized. Every one of you. 
every one of you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, through the blood of Christ, that ye may receive the gift of the what? Holy Spirit. So we can receive the gift of the outpour of the Holy Spirit unless we repent first. We got to repent first. So you got to have that mind to what? get right with God. How do we get right? We got to turn from sin. How do we turn from sin? Through Christ. He's going to show us. We don't know. It says, who knew no sin that we might be made the righteous of God in him. That we may be made the righteousness of God in him. Through him. We're made the righteousness of God through being born again through Christ. By living a new life according to the teachings of Christ, we become a new creature. The old covenant sacrifice could never do that. The old covenant sacrifices could never do that to our conscience. But the blood of Christ can. How do we know that? Because when you read when Peter preached the death burial of Jesus Christ, the people said they were pricked in their heart. Tell us that. When they heard these things, they were pricked in their heart. So it's showing that when you see that the Jesus Christ died for your sins, that pricks your heart more than all the Jews of animals sacrifices. So, uh, 1 Peter, uh, 18. yeah, 18, yes sir. First Peter chapter 1 verse 18 For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vague conversation received by tradition from your fathers. The Lord is the tradition of our forefathers. The old covenant animal sacrifice for atonement of sin. It was vain in the sense that it never truly purged our conscience of their works. It was a schoolmaster to bring us to what? Christ. Now it's all about the sacrifice of Christ. It's not about the old covenant. It's not about the Passover lamb. It's not about the day of atonement and the priest uh, sacrificing animals on the day of atonement for our sin. These things for us have a price. So we don't know. First Peter chapter 1 verse 19. But with the precious blood of Christ. With the precious blood of Christ is how we are redeemed from our sins. So we're redeemed from our sins through the blood of Christ. Not the blood of Moses, no. But the blood of Christ, the Son of God. He was a man without blemish that God provided for us. We don't. It says, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot. So we're redeemed from the blood of Christ. That's what John the Baptist meant by it. He told the Lamb of God, take up the way to see the Lord. He was saying, the Spirit was speaking. We don't, brother. Verse 20. Who burning was ordained before the foundation of the world. So Jesus Christ being sacrificed for our sins was the determinant for knowledge and counsel of God. Before the heavens and earth were created and mankind was created and man sinned. And the Most High chose a, a people of all of Adam to be his people that he would establish his covenant with. God knew that what? He was going to sin. So it was already, like Peter said in Acts 2, it was the determinant counsel of all knowledge of God that our Lord was to be killed. But was manifest in these last times for you. So Jesus Christ came in the beginning was called the last times, the last days. Times meaning days. So we're living in the last days. The last days began when Christ came on this earth. And guess what? We're still in the last days. Even though it's the year 2024, it's been way over 2,000 years since the beginning of the last days. And we're still in there. But people say, well, how can this today be the last days? People said that 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 500. Everybody been saying that. They were saying that 2,000 years ago. But what we have to understand is God's 
frame of time is greater than ours. What's a thousand years to us is one day to the Lord. So the most I works in his time. But we're living in the last days. Just because we on this earth, you know, we might not make it to 70, 80, 90, 100. I don't know. Maybe a little above, beyond that. And that's a long life in the estimation of some. But in the time frame of God, what is that? Yes. So we have to understand, like, what Peter's point was, was, was a thousand years to us is only one day to the Lord. We got to be long some. We got to be in this for the long haul. Abraham died in the faith. Not having received the promise. That having seen them afar off, later on in the history of the world, he embraced the promise. He was persuaded of the promise. He knew that what? This might not be in my life. I'm going to die in the faith. And he told his sons when I die, bury me with my wife. Bury me. Because when the Savior comes, I'm going to be risen from the dead to be heirs of the kingdom of God with my wife and you. And all my people. See? That's the frame. We got we to hold it down like Abraham. A lot of Israelite doctors, hold them north. I mean, when I first started to learn, you know, I was Israel and scriptures. You know, brothers saying, yeah, 1995. Yeah, certain brothers at the church say, yeah, 1995. I don't see this kingdom going by, by past 1995. It was taught Christ coming before the year 2000. That was like the definite cutoff point. Christ is coming by the year 2000. And you have some brothers say, no, nah, I, I, I see by 1995. That was like 1990 when that was said. And where we at, 2024. And these guys still preaching. And he repented. We gotta repent and humble ourselves. Because now we in the truth. What we think to be the truth. Now God got to come in our life. Yeah, we were living our life in sin, right? We're repenting from sin. It should be an abomination to us. But now so I had enough of this thing. Well, you know what? Because we had enough, the most I gonna hasten it for us. He gonna hasten it for the elect's sake. Man, because it's his time. His time frame. The disciples thought, because the Lord promised them that in just a few days they will receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. When they actually came together, they said, No, but now at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel. Because why did they try to outpour the Holy Spirit? The kingdom. What the Lord said, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power to restore again the kingdom. So they thought they were going to receive the kingdom in their lifetime. The Lord already told them in the regeneration, that's when you're going to get it, the resurrection. You're going to sit upon 12 thrones, judges in Israel. That's when you're going to have your reward in the kingdom of come. That he already told them. In the regeneration. The regeneration ain't came back yet. We're not in the regeneration. The Lord ain't sitting in the throne of his glory, ruling over the tribes of Israel, nations in captivity, a, a, a righteous kingdom. We're not there yet. So the, res the regeneration is not taken. That's a false doctrine that these Israelites be teaching us. And they don't even teach the regeneration like the Lord taught them, the resurrection. The most high restore again the kingdom of Israel, the resurrection. They teach a devil doctrine of reincarnation. Because they're portraying themselves falsely as the prophets of the past reincarnated. That's why they come out with these demonic titles. The prophets are back. What do you mean, back from what? Because they got a doctrine of reincarnation. So we got to repent, Israel, and learn the resurrection. But that's what Abraham died in the faith. Not coming on this earth again every third and fourth generation, man. Jacob said, my days have been few and evil. You think he want to go through this over and over, reincarnated? A hundred, two hundred times? Paul said, man, I, there's a part of me that I, I just want to die, man, and go to sleep and wait for the Lord to, to wake me up to be in the kingdom. But, but now the Lord got me alive to preach his word. The hope of our fathers was never to die and then be reincarnated every third or fourth generation. The hope of our fathers was to be risen from the dead to be made immortal, not born in the captivity. 
We've been in this captivity here in America, what, three, four hundred years? So if you reincarnate every three or four generations, that means you've been in this captivity two or three times. Well, they all wonder, who wants to be in that condition? No, we want a kingdom where indwell in righteousness. An everlasting. A kingdom where the love of God, the love of brethren, and peace flourish on earth. A righteous kingdom. A mortal to live forever. To keep the Passover with Christ in the kingdom. With your loved ones. With Abraham. That's what I desire. I want to be able to keep the Passover with Abraham. Isaac, Jacob, Isaiah, Noah, Enoch, Judah, Hadassah, Esther, right? Mary Magdalene. I want to have time with them. And the ones that endured God willing with me. Like Joshua and Caleb, when they made it to the promised land, they got like a little slice of what it is to endure in God. They were in Egypt, in captivity together as brothers. They endured the captivity in Egypt. They endured the 40 years in Egypt. I mean, the, uh, the captivity in Egypt, the 40 years in the wilderness, and actually got to rest in the promised land. That's why the scripture says that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. When we diligently seek God, He rewards us to endure day by day. And even if we have to die in the faith, because eventually Joshua and Caleb died. Because that land that they saw, that was not truly the promised land. That was not the promised land. The promised land, it was promised land in the sense that it was, it's the land that God said that, you know, she told Abraham, Isaac, Jacob that we would get coming out of Egypt. But it's not the rest. That's what the book of Psalms and Hebrews 4 goes into. Mosai speaks of another rest. After Israel got their rest under Joshua, Mosai speaks of another. What rest is that? The kingdom of the Most High in Christ on earth. That's the rest we see. So then, labor. Labor in the Lord. Let us labor to enter into that rest. All right, brother. So where we at now, brother? John 1, we were, and then we read Exodus 12, right? Exodus 12, let me see if we were finished. Yeah, we were finished with that, Exodus 12. We read John 1, oh, Luke 24, that's where we start. Luke 24 verse 47 and that repentance and remissions of sins should be preached in his name. So why should repentance and remissions of sins be preached under the power and authority of Jesus Christ? Because he's the Lamb of God. At this point he already made the sacrifice. The Lord was already crucified and killed. He was killed during the preparation of the Passover. Tell us that. Let's prove that. Let's go to John 18. Because we were reading how the Passover lamb had to be killed on the 14th day. Meaning during the preparation of the Passover. So let's read John chapter 19. And verse 30. <clears throat> John 18, verse 30. They answered and said unto him. Oh, I'm sorry, 1930. 1930. Yeah, John 19. John 19, verse 30. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. It's finished, meaning that his hour finally came and now it's accomplished. Christ. Bearing the sins of our people, just like Isaiah spoke about in Isaiah 53. It, 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 it's, come, it's come to pass. You know, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. So he bowed his head on that cross that he was down to and gave up the spirit. 
That's what I meant by ghost, the spirit. So at this point, the Lord is already dead. All right, let's read on. Verse 31. They Jews, therefore, because was their preparation. The Jews, therefore, because what? Because it, it was the preparation. Because it was the preparation. <clears throat> so, so the Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation. So what? What were they preparing for? Let's be honest. It says that the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day. That the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day. So when Christ was killed and gave up the spirit, it was not right for him to remain on that cross going into the next day. Because that's against the law, but also because what? The Sabbath grew on. So what Sabbath was Israel preparing for that was drawing near? That Christ's body couldn't remain so that, let's say his son, let's say that his body was on the cross and the son said already, it would be going into the next day. That's against the law. And on top of that, that would be, it would be a, a, a high holy day. What holy day was Israel preparing for? Let's find out. It says, for the Sabbath day was a high day. Read that again. For the Sabbath no, day. It said that. Oh. For that Sabbath day. For that Sabbath. Was a high day. Was a high day. See, that Sabbath that was approaching, that Sabbath was a high. So, so it wasn't that day that was the Sabbath. It was that day. That day was a Sabbath. The day that was coming in was the Passover 11 bread. But let's prove that. Let's go down to John 19 and verse 13. John 19, verse 13. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement. But in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. There you go. So now Pilate therefore heard that saying. Because when you read earlier, it said, Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. So they're like, oh, he calls himself a king. <coughs> All right. So then, so now Pilate is with the Lord now. Now let's read the 14 verse. John 19 verse 14. And it was the preparation of the Passover. And it was the preparation of the what? Passover. So when was Christ killed? During the preparation of the what? Passover. Just like we read where in Exodus 12. How the lamb had to be killed on the 14th day. Because on the 14th day, the first one that even is the Lord's Passover. Let's prove that. Hold that. Go to Leviticus chapter 23. And verse uh, 4. So we understand a lot of our people, they might not be aware and have knowledge of these scriptures. But that's all right, because what does that mean? That God is merciful. When we don't know something that's vital to our salvation, and that information is being given to us, that's mercy of God. So call you upon the Lord by His name. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked man forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Now, today is the day to repent. Every one of you. The Lord has commanded that repentance should be preached in his name among all nations. Beginning in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the world. So, Leviticus 23 verse 4. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which He shall proclaim in their seasons. So in the Bible, the Bible tells us, we're reading from Leviticus 23 in the Bible, the true holy days of God. Or holidays, right? Holy days, holidays, right? You're not gonna read Easter in none of these. Well, the only time you read about Easter is when you read about Asherah, idolatry. But the, the, the celebration of Christ being risen on the first day of the week, that is nowhere in the Bible. Nowhere, did, nowhere in the Bible did it say he rose on the first day of the week, and nowhere did it say they celebrated it. So when we're celebrating the first day of the week, we're saying he rose on the first day of the week, and it's not in the Bible, then we have to consider and discern what Christ said. Am I worse than God in vain? Am I, am I fearing and worshiping God according to traditions of men? Okay, 
and, and, and holy convocation meaning a gathering that we assemble together. Leviticus chapter 23 verse 5. In the 14th day of the first month at Eve. In the 14th day of the first month at what? At Eve. At even. Oh, say even or even. 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 So now, it's the 14th day, right? It's the first month, which happens to be the month that, this is the first month of the year. Almost 14 days ago was the new moon. And that, any new moon, the new moon of the beginning of the year, the beginning of our months. New moon meaning new month. So we're in the month of a bit, random, first month of the year. Today is the 14th day of the first month. The same day that Christ died on the cross. That's what we're going that's what we're doing. So go ahead, brother. Again, in the 14th day. Of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. So on the 14th day of the first month, which begins on the 15th day, is the Lord's what? Passover. So, remember it told us in John 19, when Jesus Christ died, that it was the preparation and the Sabbath was coming. And that day, that Sabbath was a high day. So what, when Christ died on the cross and the sun is getting ready to set, you know, not too long from then, what convocation, what Sabbath, what feast day is coming in? Passover. So on the 14th day of the first month of even is the Lord's Passover. Read on. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So the Passover Feast of Unleavened Bread are both on the 15th day of the first month. The 14th day of the first month at even. So when it's the 14th day, as we're in now, or the first month, when the sun sets today, that begins the 15th day. So when it's the 15th day of the first month, we know that what? It's the Passover Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is all about Jesus Christ being our lamb like John the Baptist prophesied, and us being unleavened, per sin being purged from us through Christ, because only the blood of Christ purged our conscience from what? Dead works to serve the living God. That's why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 5 that through Christ becoming our lamb, we're to be what? Unleavened. We're to be void of leaven. The leaven of what? Malice. Wickedness that leads to what? Sin. The breaking of God's commandments. Go ahead, brother. It's a feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. Pass over unto the Lord. Yeah. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. So under the old covenant for seven days, we had to eat unleavened bread. Which is symbolic of us being unleavened through the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. Because remember, the blood of Christ purged our conscience from dead works. What is that? Malice and wickedness. We don't. Verse 7. Leviticus 23, verse 7. In the first day. You shall have a holy. So oh, okay, I'm sorry. Cut you off. And the first day you shall have a what? A holy convocation. All right. So the first day tonight of the Passover unleavened bread is a holy convocation. Our people are welcome. <laughs> All right. Hey, even if you learn this for the first time, hey, in Acts two they learned Christ for the first time. They were like, hey, what do I got to do? The brother in Acts 8, he learned the truth of Christ. He was like, what permitted me to be? He, he ready, I'm ready to follow the Lord today. And that's how we got to start thinking. Man. Don't tarry to turn to the Lord. The scripture tells us, but don't tarry to turn to the Lord. As a matter of fact, let's get that point, bro. Hold, uh, we're finished with that. Go to Ecclesiastes, what is that, 5 and 7 in the pocket for brother? Let's get that, bro. These scripts coming out for all of us, man. Me, this brother, you, all of every one of you. Every one of you. The most I want God, the scripture say, why you why will you die, O house of Israel? Make a new heart and spirit. The Lord wants to make a new heart. That, that's what, what Ezekiel was telling Israel. That's what the Lord was telling Nicodemus. But not Nicodemus couldn't get it. 
When the Lord says you got to be born again, you got to be born of water and of the Spirit. Can a man be born when he is old already? The Lord's like, you are a master of the law. You are a teacher of the law of Moses and the books of the prophets. And you don't know what I mean by being born again? In other words, the Lord's born is in the scriptures. You should know this. But the Lord didn't hold it against him. He said it in that way so that that man could be like, man, I don't know as I ought to know, man. I'm a, I'm a teacher in Israel. I need to be taught. Yeah, I'm teaching Israel in the synagogues at Jerusalem. Man, I think I need to be taught. <laughs> that's, how, that's how we got to come before the Lord. The chief priests, elders, and scribes, they're like, they were filled with so much pride. The people that he taught in Capernaum, I don't know if there was Capernaum said, their pride went all the way into heaven. So a lot of Israel, they, they were filled with pride, man. It's like a lot of Israelites, these, these Israelite kings. Hey, brother, we got to repent. Repent from what? How about that so-called image of Christ? How about that? No, we got rid of the Caesar Borgia. Yeah, we, I know that. That's a devil, but that's a devil too. We talking about the black image of Christ? You're not supposed to have any images of the God in Acts 17. Oh, well, uh, it's, it's, we don't worship it. The Lord didn't ask me whether you worship it. He said, don't make it. Because making it will lead you to worship it. Because that's the image you're going to have in your mind when you pray. And that's the image made like your corporate man. He been telling Israel, hey, look, we supposed to repent and be baptized in water. Repent, baptize in water. For what? Because it's a commandment of Christ. That's what. Just like the Lord's communion. It's a commandment of Christ. It's symbolic of the body and blood of the Lord. What is water baptism symbolic of? The death and burial of the old man and the rising of the new. That's what Paul was explaining in Romans 6. A lot of our people feel with so much pride. Like, I ain't got to repent. Repent for what? I know the scriptures. I know I'm the Israelite. That was the same attitude the chief priests, elders, and scribes of Israel, many of them had towards the Lord. And we got to humble ourselves in that pride. Let's read on, brother. Five, five and seven, brother. Go ahead. Ecclesiastes chapter five, verse seven. Make not tarry. What does to tarry mean when you put it off? Don't put it off. Turn it to the Lord. A lot of people say that. Sometimes they'll hear the scriptures. I remember when he was teaching out in Boston, Massachusetts. We heard that a lot back then too. We were like, teaching the scripture, hey man, we gotta get right, we gotta repent, keep these commandments. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, man. Yeah, I know, man, I know that Bible's right. And I gotta get, I, I, I gotta get myself right. And, and then, then I'm gonna learn. I just not gonna get myself right first, man. Uh, you know, so in other words, like, I gotta get myself right and then follow the Bible. No, we, we gotta follow the Bible to get right. So we know we gotta get right. We know we gotta put out sin, the works of the flesh, right? But don't tarry. Don't wait. Make no tarry to what? Turn to the Lord. That's what John was telling the people. Repent. Repent from your sins. That's what Christ taught the apostles. Taught. So when they said repent, that day. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. Uh, hold that point, right? Uh, I just want to uh, make a point. In Acts 2.38, it said, in Acts 2.37, Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins that ye may receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Then in verse 40 it says, And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this onshore generation. Verse 41, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 sins. So did they tell Peter, oh, Peter, let me get myself right. I, cruci I was partaking, crucifying the Lord. Let me gather my thoughts together. Let me get right. I'll, I'll be back. When are y'all going to be back? Y'all going to be out here next Sabbath, brother? 
All right, peace and blessings, brother. You know, when they're like, hey, Peter, you coming back next week? Y'all baptizing next week? They didn't say that. They said that same day they repented and got baptized. Our life is like a vapor of smoke that appeared for a little while and then vanishes away. So we'll probably be off next time. Y'all gonna be out here next time? Yeah, man, yeah, I'm gonna check y'all out, man. Yo. Wait, where y'all have your Bible study? Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Y'all gonna check y'all out, man. They be walking away, rolling the joint. Come on, man. That means we, we ain't for real. We gotta apply the scriptures. David said in Psalm 119 and 60, I made haste, I delayed not to keep thy commandments. When Abraham told, when the Lord told Abraham, you and all the males in your house got to be circumcised, they said that self same day, beginning with himself and all the male servants in his house, they got circumcised. That day, Abraham said, oh, I'm going to think my children are ready for this. My wife she probably gonna give me a hard time. Let me can give me like two weeks to convince her. I'll, don't worry, Lord. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure she's all right with it. <laughs> I said that day. So same thing. Abraham was a friend of God. Walk with God. And most I told Abraham to do so. He did it that day. He didn't put it off. Cause we put things off. What does that mean? There's still lust that's within us that we need to fulfill, right? So let me fulfill my, let me continue, let me get these sins out of my system and then I'm going to get right. Well, guess what? In the midst of getting those sins out of your system, we're going to die. Because now we're tempting God. Because now we know better. We don't want to tempt God like that. So read it again from the top. So we in Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 7. Make no tarry to turn to the Lord. Don't and tarry to turn from sin. And serve and turn, turn to God. Don't put it off, man. And put that off from day to day. Do not put off turning from sin day after day after day. What? One day becomes another day, another day. It's one week, two weeks, three weeks. And we talking about, yeah, I'm going to get right with the most high. You know, I just, I'll get there. That's not the scriptures. That's not fearing God. That's not walking with God. That's not faith in God. That's what? tempting God. And God's power when it is tried, like it said in Wisdom of Solomon 1, reprove it for the unwise. Most High shames those that try his power. Tempt the power to Most High, put the shame. You know? It says, for suddenly, for suddenly, shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. Woo. Woo. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth while we're in the midst of our sin. Day to day, but talking about we're going to turn to the Lord. But suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, read on. And in thy security. And in thy security, meaning that false sense of security that you have, that you can put off turning to the Lord and still remain in sin, you in that false sense of security. And in thy security, thou shalt what? Thou shalt be destroyed. Thou shalt be what? Destroyed. We're going to be destroyed in that self, that, that self sense of security that we have. A false sense of security, I should say. I ain't nothing happened to me yet. So I, yeah, I, I'm gonna turn to the Lord. That's not the scripture. Um, from there, go to uh, Psalm 119.60 because that's all you want to do. Okay, go ahead, bro. It says, "Thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance." Thank you, bro. Who's taking the vengeance? God. Why? Because we tempted. Him. We tried His power. He opened His hand for us to repent. And then what? We keep doing this, and in our security, we perish because we want to smoke our drugs. We want to get high. We want to sell drugs. We want to commit fornication. We want to commit adultery. You want to sleep with that woman. You want to keep that going, cheating on your wife, see? And we in the midst of that, what happened? Now, the most I judge you. Now you got AIDS. Now you got a sexually transmitted disease. What a guy found out you slept with his wife. Hot! Osha said that that man would not spare in the day of vengeance. Any more on that, brother? What was that? So if that old soul works up, I don't know what will. We're supposed to tremble at the word of God. 
Like after reading that, we supposed to be like. Get on our hands and knees and pray. You can ask 2260. And don't let our past hold us back either. Nah, I did too much dirt. I did too much dirt, man. The Lord will never forgive me. Most I got scriptures for everything. Check out Paul's past. That brother was wasting the church of God. He was destroying believers in Jesus Christ. Putting them in prison and persecuting them. He consented on the step and step. He stood by and consented on the step and step when he was stoned to death. But the Lord himself appeared unto him and called him in the pool. And he needed a man to say, hey, come on, brother. Let's read it. Acts 22, 16. <laughs> Acts 2, Acts 22, verse 16. And now, why tarries thou? Why are you tarrying? We just read, make no tarrying to turn to the Lord. Read on. Arise. Arise. Get up, brother. Be done. And be baptized. And get in that water. Let's go. Let's get in that water, bro. Let's fulfill the commandment of the Lord. Let's fulfill all righteousness. Like, like the apostles preach. Let's get in that water, bro. Let's get you baptized. Be done. And wash away thy sins. Wash away your sins, man. Christ died for you. Get in that water. And partake. Do your part in the death, burial, or resurrection of Christ. Get in that water and wash away your sins. Get in there. Now we know it's the blood of Christ that cleanses us from sin. So he's what what um what's his name? Uh, what's the brother's name? What's his name? And nice, thank you, brother. And nice's point was brother, get let's get in that water. Let's go through the whole process. Let's get it. Let's get it going. Go ahead, brother. Calling on the name of the Lord. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Calling on the name of the Lord. And the scripture said that him that called on the name of the Lord depart from what? Evil. So finally, the brother got in that water, got baptized, came out that water, a new creature. Now, was it the water that changed him per se? Well, it wasn't the water. It's Christ. But he, he obeyed the commandment that Christ gave in Matthew 28, 19. Peter said, to receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, you must repent and be baptized. A lot of you all, no, you ain't got to get baptized, just repent. Receive the Holy Spirit, like even in the case of Cornelius, in his case, Case of Cornelius and his kinsmen and his friends, they received the outpouring of the Holy Spirit before they got baptized. And Peter still commanded them to be baptized in water. So you can't, there's no way around it. There's no, ah, uh, I'm gonna go this way, uh, that way. And we got all these scriptures, oh, Psalm 119, 6, Ephesians 5, 25, 26. Uh, and then taking scriptures like 1 Corinthians 10 out of context. No matter which way you go, you can't avoid the commandment that Peter through Christ gave them. Repent and be baptized. He's not talking about get baptized by the word. They already believed in Christ out the word. What was Peter teaching in Acts 2? Psalm 16, verse 8 through 11, Psalm 110, Joel 2, all the scriptures. And when they believed that Jesus Christ was the Lord and Christ of Israel, out of the scriptures, they were pricked in their heart. I said, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said, you got to repent and get baptized. So they both go hand in hand, repenting from sin, get baptized in water, to receive remission of sins through the blood of Christ, and the gift of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, they all go hand in hand. So let's read on, brother. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, that was it on there, right? And they tell you that when Paul got baptized, he came out a new creature. Man was on fire, he couldn't be stopped. No man could gainsay the wisdom that he spoke. He confounded the Jews in the scriptures, proving that Jesus truly indeed is the Lord in Christ of Israel. When at one point he was persecuting those that called on the name of the Lord. So the Most High made a complete turnaround with that brother. But that brother was tarrying. Now we don't go into depth why he was tarrying. But anything that's tarrying us. Causing us to tire to turn to God, that's the devil, man. So 
No matter what it is, don't let it get in the way. Our past, our fears, our unwillingness to let go of the world. I said, if you lose, if you save your life in this world, you're going to lose out on eternity. But if you lose your life in this world, for my sake, you're going to gain eternity. Lot's wife didn't understand that. She turned around, became a pillar of salt. They tell us in the wisdom of Solomon that she be, that was she became a uh, that pillar. She became a I would say a pillar of an humble. Uh, she became a pillar of an unbelieving soul. She turned into a pillar of salt. Now, no, the scripture said she was a monument of an unbelieving soul. Why? Because she didn't want to let go of the world. I was that trying to get the hell out of there, Solomon and Gomorrah. Of her wickedness. There's something that she couldn't let go. That's why once we're in Christ, we can't turn back into the world. Because it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. We crucify Christ afresh when we do that. We have to endure. Our faith begins with Christ and is matured and perfected in Christ. Christ is the author and finisher of our faith. We're saved by faith. We're, we're called by faith. We're saved by faith. We understand faith without works is dead. But there are no works unless we truly humble ourselves and repent of baptizing Christ. There's no scripture that goes against water baptism, is there? There is none. Any scripture you got that you going to go against water baptism, if we're spiritual enough to discern, we see, oh, that go with water baptism. Not against it. Let me tell you, we show brothers the water baptism. Yeah, all right, what about this scripture? Oh, so you're saying the word, so say here to get baptized hey, in this scripture, saying not to. So the Lord, the, 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 in Acts 15, it tells us that to disagree the words of the prophets. The scriptures agree. They don't contradict each other. So when we thinking that we're going to get a scripture to go against water baptism, we got to understand, man, maybe I'm taking this scripture out of context. That's what it means. That's one of the ways, that's one of the lying powers of Satan. God and, and take it out of context. We're in a way where, yeah, I'm following this. Say right there, bro. Look, 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 look. And we dead wrong. Because we're in the flesh. Carnal. Sold under sin. Try to observe something that's spiritual. The word of God. We can't. That, that's why John, Christ taught Nicodemus. That which is of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is what? Spirit means spiritual. To understand the, understand the things that be of the spirit of God, we have to be spiritual. The natural man, meaning the carnal man, cannot discern the things that be of the spirit of God. Because the things that pertain to the spirit of God only discern through the spirit. We can't be in the flesh, fulfill the lust of the flesh, right? We given it to prayer. Start in 1969 in Harlem, 125th Street in New York City. That's a lie. Okay, you got Israelites teaching that lie. Oh, yeah, the truth started in 1969, Harlem, 125th, the home of the truth. <laughs> that's not what the Bible, that's not what Christ said. Go ahead, bro. Verse 48. And ye are witnesses of these things. What were they witnesses of? The sufferings of Christ, Christ knowing that he was crucified, killed, buried. Risen from the dead, they're about to be witnesses of his ascension in heaven. So where they were witnesses of, they were to teach. That's why Peter said, I forgot what book it is in the book of Acts. He said, we can only speak the things that we've seen and hear. We can only speak the things that we've seen and heard of the Lord himself. 
They say, hey, hey, stop teaching in the Lord's name. We can only speak the things that we've seen and heard with our own eyes and ears. In other words, you can't stop this truth. They, they, the Pharisees, they couldn't stop the apostles of the Lord. When they put them in prison, one time, the Lord sent an angel and released their men out of prison. And the same place that they were taught not to teach, they were teaching. You can't fight against the Lord. The apostles' doctrine was never stopped. And Christ said, Lord, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. You can kill us, you can't kill the truth. You can kill Peter and the apostles, you can't kill. And we're not saying that we those men. That's not the point. A lot of those, what are they saying? They didn't, we're not saying we're the apostles. What we're saying is we're trying to walk in the footsteps of those great men. Because they followed Christ. So the apostles' doctrine has already been laid out. In other words, what Christ commanded here in Luke 24, it's already been adhered to. It's already been obedient. They've, they're already obedient to it. In other words, they kept commandments. They kept the commandments of Christ. And you have false leaders in Israel. My men keep my command. They follow command. What commandments are you? Corrupt men. Falsely call themselves bishops, elders, people, generals, six seal generals. Ooh, six seal generals. According to who? The vanity of their own minds. These men are legends in their own minds. They truly think that they are the ranks that they gave themselves. These are fake ranks. And the fake ranks they give you is only to manipulate and control you. You're not truly officer of 10,000. There's not even 10,000 people in your cult, but you're officer of 10,000. It's fake ranks. Christ said, to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, you gotta humble yourself like a child. That's the opposite of the doctrine of these Israelites in a lot of these camps. I'm not gonna say every camp. We don't know every camp. But the ones that's out here teaching in Phoenix, we know they got it. And Christ said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Hypocrisy, stage playing, actors, holding scripture, saying one thing, doing another. That's the leaven of the Pharisees. So let's go. Luke 24, verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. So what was the promise of the Father that the Lord promised that he would send to his disciples? The Comforter. The Spirit of Truth. So you had an offshoot of 125th Street that taught that some guy was the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. That's what they were saying. This guy, he's the Comforter. And you had a whole bunch of Israelites following Like men that followed... Uh, Men that trying to make a name for themselves in the book of Acts 5. And they were all dispersed and came to know. Where's the Israelite group now? They were boasting that this guy's the company. The man ended up in jail and then died. And then, and we're not making fun of that or light of that. And then the people, they scattered. But they were boasting. We're the only ones that, and all you that left, ISUPK, y'all not in the truth. Y'all a bunch of rebels and what happened? The Lord had to humble y'all. Lord humble. Christ said, if you exalt yourself, you're gonna be a humble, you're gonna be humble. The greatest in the kingdom of God are those that humble themselves as a child. We have to have the faith and humility of a child to be we can't come to the Lord with pride. Oh, I already know this, I know the scriptures. We don't know the Bible as we ought to know. We don't know, we don't know to serve the Lord like we ought to know. Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. The first commandment of all is hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And that's I love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. And the second is like unto it. Thus I love thy neighbor as thyself. Jesus Christ quoted Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 and 5, and Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. So Christ taught the two great commandments. The two greatest commandments. What's the one greatest commandment? That's in Deuteronomy chapter no, 6. No, that's in the New Testament in James. No, it's in Deuteronomy it 6. It's the new law. Anyone who knows the good, he ought to do and doesn't do it since. That's in James. All right, all right well, bro, you got all, you got whole area right? to teach. All right? What's the sin? So now, let's keep reading, What's bro. the only sin that you shouldn't do? Luke 24, verse 49. And behold, 
I send the promise of my father upon you. So the promise was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Right. The outpouring. That was a promise that God the made with the one. children of Israel. The three. Now, let's read on. Underneath the sun. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. But they would await and tarry in the city of Jerusalem. We wait. Because that's when the outpouring of the Holy Spirit would first be What's manifest. Read on. Until you be in due. With power from all high. Because they would not receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit oh, until Christ ascended to sit on the right hand of God oh, to enter into his glory. So they had to wait till the Holy Spirit oh, descended wait. upon them and then they would teach. It's a bag. Read on, brother. That's how you wait. Verse 50. Luke 24, verse 50. And he led him out as far as the Bethany. So he led him out as far as the Bethany. Read on. And he lifted up his hands. And he lifted up his hands. And blessed him. And he blessed his disciples. Read on. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. Both of them. When he blessed them. When he blessed them. He was parted from them. He was parted from them. He split. was parted from them. Split. So the Lord ascended to the Father. Right. He split. Up and, and down. And carried up into heaven. He was carried North and up south. into heaven. It's the east and so, west. So the Lord ascended to sit on the right hand of God it's in the heaven of the heavens. It's Read a cup. 52. And Luke 24 verse 52. And it circles us. And they worship him. And they what? Worship so they worship, worship the Lord in spirit and in truth as the Son of God. Read on. That's right. And return to the and return to Jerusalem with great joy. And Where's they Jerusalem? return to Jerusalem with what? Great, great joy. joy. Because they Jumping knew joy. the words that he spoke in John 14. Out of the light. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come on to you. That's defeat. So how is Christ to return onto them? In the form of the comforter. Undefeated. The spirit of truth. Because the Father of Christ. Christ said, the Father and I. He that keepeth my commandments, the Father and I will make our abode with Just read it. So now, let's go to Mark 16, 19. That's right. Matthew, Mark. The healing is in Luke. Mark 16, 19. <clears throat> this is the book of Mark. Chapter 16, verse 19. So then after, the Lord has spoken unto them. So now remember, when Jesus Christ was crucified, buried, risen from the dead, three days and three nights after his burial, he, was awoke. he appeared unto his disciples, and he was with them for 40 days. He woke up. So when the Lord was risen from the dead, he was with his disciples. See? So read on, bro. The Holy Spirit. He was never received dies. up into heaven. So the Lord Jesus Christ was received up. The Holy into Spirit heaven. is read on. it. And sat on the right hand of God. So he sat on the right hand of God to fulfill in what scripture? To fulfill what scripture? In, in the book of the law and the prophet. Psalm Revelation. 110, verse 1. Revelation. A lot of these so-called Christian churches, they do not teach. The law and the prophets. That's right. They teach that the commandments of God are done away that's with. Correct. And that's a lie. In Revelation. Because in 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, it says, Know ye not that the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, but it goes into the sin. Sight. Murder, adultery, fornication, idolatry. So, read that last one. first. Got, okay, you got it, brother? Read that. Psalm 110, verse 1. The Lord said unto my Lord. So the Heavenly Father said unto David's Lord, Jesus Christ, Sit thou on my right hand. Until I make thy Neil. enemies thy footstool. Sit down my right hand till to I kneel. make thy what? To kneel. Footstool. Thy enemies. enemies. Right, to kneel. That's right, brother. So you kneel. So Why what, kneel? what God was telling Jesus Christ, ask the question. Ask. Sit here on my right hand until I make your foes your footstool. Sit. So the enemies of Christ will be made as footstool Don't beat with it the up. second coming of Christ. Don't beat it. And the final enemy that's going to be destroyed is death. Chew it up. Because death shall be swallowed up in victory. That's right. So death. the resurrection from the dead is death. The dead shall be risen to be He's made dead. immortal. That's the final enemy that's, that's the death. Be destroyed. Of death. So until then, Christ is sitting on the right hand of God. With and the, the dog. Lord is being ran by the word of his power. The dog is loose. That's why he said in Matthew 28, 18, all power is given unto me. Keep in heaven it. and in earth. Therefore, go ye therefore and teach all nations. Baptizing them. Baptizing. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Jesus Spirit. Jesus Christ. And that's what... Lord is commanding here. That's right. 12 and in Mark. So That's we know, way. Oh. Mark 16, verse 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere. So everywhere in the book went. of Acts, after they received out form the Holy Spirit, they went the way. Beginning at Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth, the apostle of the Lord preached the word of God everywhere. How do you went the way? Read on, brother. The Lord working with them. The Lord Jesus Christ Ask. is working with them. Ask Read on. Why? And confirming. The word with signs, Ask with why. signs. And confirming the word with what? Ask signs. Why. And what? Questions. Signs following. Asking. What does that go with? Go to John 14. And Ask go. a question. Well, what did it mean by confirming the word to with ask, signs and what? To seek. Well, and to remember, knock. we just read 
that Jesus Christ ascended to sit on the right hand of God. He knocks on your heart. Once Christ would ascend to sit on he the right hand your of heart. God, that's the door. The works that Jesus Christ the did, door. they would do. The and door is greater. the day. So let's read that. All right, hold up. Stay right there. That's brother. right. Uh, John, 14. John, 14, John 14, verse 12. Yes, sir. Verily, verily, I said unto you. Truly, truly, I say unto you. The word. He that believeth on me. He that believeth on me. To believe he on Jesus me, Christ is to believe, I believe in him. that he is the Christ, he is the way, the son of the, the living God, and, and he's the, the Messiah of Israel. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, the works that I do. So what were some of the works that Jesus Christ did? He raised the dead. Don't you dare get distracted. He healed the sick. He taught the word of God. Now, the works that I do, read on, shall he. Shall he do also? Shall he do also? That's when you're married. So those that believe in Jesus Christ, remember he was speaking to who? His disciples. I do. So the disciples of the Lord would do the works that Jesus Christ did. I and do. What? And greater works. And greater. even greater works. Greater, even greater. Read on. On the that earth. Is, shall he do. As it is in that heaven. these shall he do. So what is the Lord telling his disciples? In heaven in he. If you believe that I am the Christ, in the Greek. Son of the living God, the, rain. the works that I'm doing, you're going to do the ray and you're even going to do greater works in me see the not fourth, separate or aside from me but because what the four sons it says because i go unto my father then what do we mean in mark 16 that christ ascended to sit on the right hand of god he and then it tells you that when the, when he ascended they were praising the words from the lord and they rejoiced in spirit and child because they knew that he would return unto them in the form of the comforter and by Christ returning unto his disciples in the form of the comforter, the same works that Jesus Christ did, true. they would do also. It's the greater sign. works. Not separate or aside no, from Jesus Christ, sign. but through Jesus right, Christ. Right, all through together. To prove that God all four. and Christ was with See, those men. To be for. So all praises. To be for. To the heaven, well, we got uh, five minutes. To be or not to be. So uh, let's get that in John 14 and verse 12. Why 14, 12? I mean, uh, the 15 verse now. 15 verse. Uh, okay. John 14 verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. So the Lord was teaching his disciples. If you truly love me, you have to guard with your life the commandments that I have given you. That's Don't right. cast them to the side. Don't let Satan snatch out of your heart. Don't do it. That help has been sworn in your heart. Who's Judas? So when Christ taught the word of God to the, you know, to, the the, to his disciples, all of them, they were not to let Satan take that word out of Judas. Him. Even the Lord it's prayed Judah. for Peter. He said, look, Satan is desired to ship you as the wheat, that I have what I prayed for you. Judas is Jerusalem. And we're now converted, strength in our brethren. So with our life, we're the guard. How do you turn a Jew into a God's Gentile? God's commandments. You gird it. Around so when the Lord said, if you love truth. me, keep my belt. commandments. Ephesians. The context do you wear it? of this word keeping is to guard with your life. Ephesians 6. To keep it locked in your heart. Don't let Satan snatch it out right. of you. Ephesians 6. Go ahead, brother. Press pray to Verse 16. And I will pray the Father. And I'm going to pray to the Heavenly Father. Praise God. And He His shall give name. you another comforter. And He shall give you another comforter. Who is The it? Father's going to give you another comforter. Who's the comforter? Because the comforter to begin with that was among them was Jesus Christ. Right. The flesh. teacher. But now the Lord knew on this day that He was going to be crucified and killed. So He knew that. And we read it. You know, He will return on to them for 40 days. And then sent to the Father. Right. So now, that he would not, it's, it's going to explain. He would not That's leave right. him alone. So read that again, brother. It says, and I would pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. So who is the comforter that he may abide with you forever? That's Jesus That's Christ. Right. Because in Matthew 28, Christ said, Lo, I am with you always, even unto what? Because he never puts you down. So just finish that, bro. I'm saying, I'm okay. All right, so with that, so we got to get going. So I'll praise the to Heavenly Father in the name the of the Lord Jesus day. Christ for these scriptures. So we say peace and blessings to those that heard the word and may the Lord show in your heart, you know, the word that has been preached. Anything you want to add? To Most high Christ bless you, Israel. Thank you for Jerusalem. tuning in today. Happy Passover coming in wherever you are. Enjoy fellowshipping. Most high Christ bless you all. Amen.